Hi, I'm Nicholas Burling. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Black Lives Matter. And I know that's a little bit of a departure from my usual LGBTQ2 plus content, but the reality is I'm an intersectional advocate. And as people who have been marginalized as trans people, as gay people, we should understand that it's not okay to marginalize other people. I mean, everyone should understand that, but we have the experience of being marginalized and we should be able to use that experience to be empathetic towards other marginalized people. As with last week when I did my video on non-binary identities, in this video I want to make it perfectly clear that I am not black and I am not speaking for black people. I simply want to bring attention to the issue and I want to act as a good ally and amplify the voices of black folks. So please keep that in mind as we continue on through this video. Let's get into it. Today I had the opportunity to listen to a variety of incredibly powerful speakers at the Coquitlam Black Lives Matter protest. And it was an eye-opening experience. I've done a lot of this sort of research around Black Lives Matter and around being a good ally towards folks, uh, making sure that we're combating racism. I've taken anti-oppression workshops. But to hear stories of people in your neighborhood experiencing racism, one person had to move around to a lot of different schools in Coquitlam, had a very good idea of what racism here looks like. People have talked about not wanting to be pulled over by police and making sure that they're grandchildren, their children are able to drive around the city and not be harassed by police. So this is a very real issue even locally here. So I want to do what I can to bring awareness to the issue. I know that Black Lives Matter is not in the media as much as it was maybe a month ago, but that doesn't mean we can stop this conversation. This has to be an ongoing conversation and it's something that we can't just look at as, oh, that was a movement, that was interesting, it was powerful, and now we're gonna forget about it. This is something that has to be part of our lives for as long as we're on this earth. We constantly have to be evaluating the ways that systemic oppression, systemic racism influence people's lives, and we have to do what we can to try to break down those structures that allow systemic racism and oppression to continue. So let's talk about one of the big issues that's come up through all of this, which is defund the police. A lot of people have some very strong opinions about this, and I think a lot of it relates to the fact that they're only hearing that phrase. They aren't understanding what it actually means. Because when you look at defunding the police, it's not saying take the money away from police, completely get rid of all police. As people at this event today pointed out, we still need the police for certain things, violent criminals, for instance. But when it comes to dealing with issues of mental health, we really don't want people with guns who don't have training around how to deal with mental health issues going into people's homes and potentially killing them as we've seen happen particularly in the US. So defunding the police means taking that money away from those armed individuals who don't have the proper training and reallocating it to people that do have the proper training to deal with those various situations that require an extra level of understanding. So for these folks who really make a big deal out of this defund word, I think what you need to do is think of it as reallocating funds, because my understanding is that's what's being asked for. But again, I'm not the expert. Please listen to what black folks in your area are asking for, and it may vary from place to place. When it comes to addressing systemic racism in our society, we have to acknowledge that casual racism exists everywhere, whether it's down to jokes, to stereotypes, the way hiring practices are conducted, any variety of aspect of our lives, you'll see racism infiltrate. And I think it's fair to say that every single person on the earth is in some way racist or has prejudiced beliefs, not because they want to, not because they're not putting in the work, but because we're brought up in an imperfect society. We're brought up in a society that teaches us these methods of casual racism and they become normalized in our lives and we forget to recognize that that racism exists. So part of what these movements are all about is making sure that we recognize instances of racism where we might not otherwise see them because now we have people pointing them out to us now we have people reminding us to reflect on that. And they've been doing this for a long time, but I think finally we're at a point where people are starting to listen. 
and people are starting to make changes. And that was one of the important pieces that I got from today's presentation. It's not enough to go on social media and make a few positive posts. It's not enough to simply have this conversation with your friends. It takes meaningful action. It takes going out into the world and physically doing the work to stop systemic racism. And that's an important lesson for us to learn. It's also a difficult one because in some ways it may mean giving up some of our privileges to make sure that we are on an equal playing field with others. The other issue that faces us is a lack of proper education. When I think back on my schooling, I learned a lot about European history and I didn't learn a lot about anything else. My dad is a Latin American historian, so I had the ability to learn about some Latin American history through him and I really appreciate having that opportunity, even if I didn't appreciate it as much back then, because it gave me a whole other insight into the world that people in my school weren't getting. And at the same time, I'm severely lacking on my history of other parts of the world, whether that's Asian or African history. I didn't learn about that. It's not taught in our schools. And the way that our textbooks are written, the way that history is written, is glorifying what it means to be white, glorifying what it means to be European, and completely ignoring other cultures and the incredible successes they have had, the incredible contributions that they've had to this world and how they were able to function perfectly fine before settlers came onto their land and disrupted everything. So this can be viewed as an instance of whitewashing. Essentially, we've had historians whitewashing our history, we've had teachers whitewashing our textbooks, and now as a society, we have become whitewashed through all of these teachings, and it's time that we reverse that trend. It's time that we start learning about black history. It's time that we start learning about indigenous history. Here in BC in particular, we don't talk nearly enough about indigenous history. We only talk about issues as they arise when it comes to white people continuing their oppression of First Nations people and not adhering to the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. But these are the kinds of conversations that need to start long before issues arise. These are the kinds of conversations that we need to grow up with so that as adults, we're not bringing this level of prejudice into the world that we've been taught. So I'm going to try to keep this video short and concise. I think I've said my piece. I haven't gone into too much detail around the issues surrounding what it means to be black because I don't have that experience. And it's not my place to try to craft a narrative for black people. It's my place as a white person, as an ally, to listen and to learn. And that's what I'm trying to do. So my purpose with this video is to make sure that you go out and that you listen and that you learn. So find some black creators, find some black voices to listen to, find some black voices to amplify, and never stop working to be the best ally that you can be. That means putting in the work, that means doing the research, that means donating to black organizations, it means volunteering for black organizations, it means doing what you can to support black people, and to support all marginalized people, because this comes back to the first point that I made, which is intersectional advocacy. When you think about trans people, you think about all of the discrimination that we face. When I think about gay people, I think about all of the discrimination that we face. When you think about black people, you think about discrimination that they face. Now, these are not the same kinds of discrimination, but they overlap in so many different ways. You think about a black trans person, they're dealing with so much of that. And these are the people that we really need to support. So I really hope that this video has inspired you to put in the work. If you've already been putting in the work, that's fantastic. Thank you for being a good ally. Keep it up. And I am going to continuously try to better myself. I'm not a perfect individual. I will admit that. And I'm constantly working to be the best me that I can be and to make sure that other marginalized people in this world are facing less marginalization because none of us are equal until all of us are equal. And until next time, have a great day.